Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where two old guys and one of their, oh, I'm not going on a limb and say they're one of their favorite guest hosts ever talk about old games. This week we're talking about, well it's Original Flavor Wednesday, so we are talking about Dorkley's Top 25 N64 games. Nailed it. This week, number 16, I believe. Don't look at me, man. 16 or 17, (laughs) maybe 17? Look, I'm just a co-host. That's it. (laughs) Like, we bear that responsibility together. We don't know the number, we just, we both don't know it. Yeah. Well, it's Rogue Squadron. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. So our foremost Star Wars space fighting expert, 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 expert Jacob York of Wolf Fighting fame, hey Pun- pundit. Hey guys, I've got a, I have a lot to say about the political ramifications mm-hmm. of space fighting. Look, we can talk about that, but well, let's wait until we get into the story. <laughs> let's wait until we get into the game because you, when I get started, you won't be able to stop me. Okay, but first, I'm your beard host Tyler, and. Though though Jacob's dad will say that there are some stories I should just keep to myself. He does. <laughs> and I don't wholly disagree. <laughs> well, then, boy, have I got a story. Because <laughs> I talked about... Two words, anal leakage. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I had told this story before, but neither one of you remember it. I consulted the Tadpog Facebook group, and no one there remembers it. Shandra was very excited to hear me talk about it, though, because she she feeds off pain and misery, I imagine, because I told her it was is a story of a sexual nature that, that does involve me crying. You know, I, tell us a dream, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a dream instead. I had a dream, but I forgot about it. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. That's fine. You, you, you want me to go, go to the lighter side? Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Just, just R, R-rated Tadpog instead of NC-17 Tadpog. Jacob's here, so we gotta go as hard at core as possible. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you, you know how I enjoy it. <laughs> He's Dave from the Chipmunks, man. We gotta like, we gotta make him mad. Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Because I'd come to college, Jake and I were living together, yeah. and a I basically because I'd come from a small conservative community so going to college was a a huge change for me so i'd only been with my high school girlfriend and and just the the loving wonder that that was so i go to college sexually 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 all right sexually (laughs) i go to college and have basically my first just out of the blue hookup uh great experience although after after it was over all that, all that conservative that had just been nailed into me over the years, just like once, oh, I wish I knew the Japanese word for it, like that moment of, of like clarity after a man orgasms where all the stuff you've been trying to get to that orgasm is now gone and you have just this moment of like wisdom or true feelings or anything like that, unclouded by biology. Bukake. Bukake, please. <laughs> so I had, I had my bukake. <laughs> Man, I've been waiting to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, after after I finished, I then broke down into sobbing tears in this nice and very very confused girl who why I so in her <laughs> no beside her <laughs> oh, I, I was done it and was we were that beside fast. Yeah. <laughs> just like a like a. <laughs> <laughs> Like a balloon when the air goes out of it. Just like, (laughs) I hope you were like, what have I done? (laughs) 
So this this is very much a regretful recall, which nah. I spoke to her about it probably about two years ago, and it happened 13 years ago. Jesus. So, because <laughs> after I was done and we were sitting beside each other, I started crying, and I was just like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, what am I... I mean, I don't, I don't even love you, and we just did that. I don't, oh, and I was just crying, and then like, she just looks at me, and at first she gets angry, and she's like, "Fine, I don't love you either." And then she sees that I'm upset, and then she feels like I have hurt this innocent young boy's feelings. So then she cries and is upset because she thinks she's done something wrong. Meanwhile, I'm just like, I don't love you. We're not going to get married. Jesus wouldn't like this. It's the, and it was just like, oh, it was awful. I mean, an hour later, I calm down and like I apologize, but da- damage has been done. Nah, probably not. She- <laughs> <laughs> an hour of crying? No. I'm pretty sure. I'm well, pretty sure I, didn't cry, I didn't cry for an hour. <laughs> Let me set the record straight, <laughs> motherfucker. I did not cry for an hour. <laughs> They're, they're married to this day, <laughs> and that's how you met Meg. But she she is a like singer songwriter, so this inspired her to write a a poem about me, which she let me read. Like you know, thir- <laughs> eleven years after the fact. Do we have it? No, 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 no. I read the poem and I was like, oh god, I'm such an asshole. Because, like, she went home the next day and wrote this while it was still fresh and still had it. Yeah. So it was just like, that is, like, one of my chief of all time regretful recalls. Because, like, we we still, we we dated and things after that. But, like, after that first moment of just, like, that was... <laughs> wait, 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 yeah, wait, 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 Back up. Uh-huh. Back up. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Right? You said you dated a little bit after. What a, yeah. wa- like, what like, a wonderful look, person. we're not going to get married. I don't love you. Yeah, let's go to Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Everyone else at Dilly Bar, Dave, regardless, regardless of the situation. Man, I don't know. I, I don't know about all this. It's crazy. You're kind of low. College is weird, yo. It is weird. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, and we're still and we're we're still very good friends. But yeah, just that's a weird time. That part is believable. Yeah. Like that part, I, I get. Well, she wrote. She wrote a very heartfelt poem, and uh, we do Tadpog. <laughs> so that's, that's how it's manifested for you later on in life. Because I've spoken about that one girl that I fool around with where she cried because I reminded of her boyfriend. Right. So it's only fair that I talk about a time when I cried. <laughs> Jacob, man, I'm no chiming in on crying about sex. I feel no, like you're missing out. He's on trying that. to find that poem. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, there, like, there's, there's nothing to be said. There's a there's been a lot of there's been a lot of Tyrone sexual experiences that end in tears from one direction or the other. So, <laughs> it's a, th- like this is par for the course. At this point, there's been fewer that have ended just normally where like everyone is happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Usually, somebody feels bad. So, feeling my dark passenger takes the happiness of others. So, <laughs> or to use a. Uh, Probably the number one quote I've heard Sean Miller of hashtag more Miller fame, his wife say, sorry, ladies, he's taken. <laughs> What's up, Internet? I'm Dave. I am your bespectacled host. And I went to Wendy's last night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> um, I knew I had to record today. And I f- didn't have an intro story. I sure as fuck was not going to talk about crying after sex because that's just because we all have those stories. That's, that's just but we just don't tell. I'm them. keeping to myself. Yeah, exactly. Um, got to got to break out of that conservative shell. Everybody does it. <laughs> so I went. Now my guilt bombs manifest in a completely different manner. Um, although, what was it? We were talking about shit. We were talking about something the other night. This is great. By the way, this is what we like to call great radio, where it's like, oh, I was thinking of a thing. What was off? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> but I was thinking about, and your story reminded me of just, I remember when I first started jerking it when I was, <laughs> Jacob just immediately, <laughs> Jacob just immediately turned from like interested to like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I remember when I first started jerking it as 
uh, a young man, I remember that as a young twenty two year old. I remember that just that sh- that shameful feeling afterward, mm-hmm. like that. I think that like now I'm just you're just completely callous too. I'll speak yeah. for myself. Now I'm just like yeah whatever. But I remember feeling so like guilt ridden when I was 13 years old, where mm-hmm, it was just like, mm-hmm. like if you could physically feel the guilt just eating, eating away, like, oh, I can't believe what I just did. I'd- mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had a, uh, yeah, I had a similar experience too, but also I th- like, it was guilty, but it wasn't even that entirely. It was that it was, um, I was terrified because it was literally something that I didn't know my body could do. It was like I had discovered I had had this thing, this body for however long, and then out of nowhere, a new feature is just like, mm-hmm. here you go. Upgrade. This is another thing that you can do. <laughs> and I like it scared the ever loving shit out of me. Um, and but yeah, I'm certain that like sort of sort of uh, conservative guilt was was sort of part of that, which is weird because my parents were not, you know, yeah. conservative. But well, it was porn just, was it I'd, for me. Yeah. Like, look, looking at porn like I'd always as soon as I was done be like, oh. That's it. I'm not doing this anymore. Delete your history. Clear everything out. Nope. I'm done. Next day later, I'll just look at. Blah, blah. Nope. Rabbit hole. Yeah. Same thing. Rinse and repeat. Some things never change. <laughs> <laughs> and I have wanted to do. I have. I haven't ever had the gusto to do it, but I've wanted to go uh, to do the month of fury from Requiem for a Dream, mm. where you go uh, no red meat, no refined sugar, no orgasm for a month, and just. See what I I would probably become an awful person to hang oh, out with yeah, yeah, because you're just it's snap necks. Well, it's just the you know these three things that I've basically had since you know f- since I was sexually active. Mm-hmm. All of these three things I have had in my life. Um, so I would be I would be very interesting. I would be interested to see what would happen if I decided to to kick those things. Mm. I went I to Wendy's last night. <laughs> Oh, I thought that you were done. I thought that I thought that your entire story was about discovering your body. <laughs> Look, sometimes I like to tell an intro story and a half, or two half intro stories, and they form one. Is this about the the guy? I went to Wendy's last night. Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> I go through the drive through. I'm I'm sitting at the menu. I'm placing the order, and I pull up to the window, and there's some woman there. Oh, some some woman there, and. What is what is beautiful about this is she saw the disappointment on my face because she like the expression on her face was like I don't understand <laughs> what <laughs> she was so confused. What, what did this guy expect? She, so it's like it was one of those things where it's like I saw her reaction. I was like, what is that? What is her reaction for? I was like, oh, I bet I was really looking weird when I rolled up. <laughs> I was like, well, I, you're not the dude. I came through here sp- specifically because I wanted to tell a story tomorrow on the show. <laughs> so I was like, all right, whatever. So anybody back there need a ride? Because you just go ask. <laughs> yeah. I, hey, I'm looking you to gotta, sell you my guys car. Gotta, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you guys got, a, you guys got a, a weird guy back there <laughs> who might love me? I don't know. Uh, so I pull up to the second window. He's also not at that one, uh-huh. unfortunately. Because it was like... I figure, okay, well, maybe maybe he's changed positions. Maybe they got him on the second window. They don't have him on the second window. Um, but what happened was I always I ordered the number six. Any like loyal Tadpog listener knows. No tomato. Number six, no tomato, exactly. Uh, I got the tomato this, this night, and maybe that's why things were so weird. Ooh. I got the tomato because um, I was going to give it to Nikki. Sometimes I like to give Nikki my tomato. I mean, sometimes you just got to You want a a gelatinous slab? Yes, I would, husband. Thank you. This one was, I mean, it was gelatinous, but at least it wasn't white. It was, you know, like (laughs) tomato colored. So It's like a tomato that comes from the inside of a clam. (laughs) A tomato that's been living under the ocean. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, sometimes when you order a number six, you got to wait like six minutes. Um, cause I guess they don't just cook the chicken like they do burgers. I don't know, but they do this thing where they're like, the girl comes to the window and she says, it's going to be about a six minute wait on your spicy chicken. Is that okay? And they always ask like, I mean, what are you going to do? Are you, you're not going to change your order. You don't change. You don't 
change your order at the second window. That's not a second window mm-hmm, transaction. Mm-hmm. All of that shit happens at the speaker box that's two spots down the line. Um, so I'm okay with this. Thing. Were you like, I, well, I wish I'd fucking known a window ago, but I guess now no, that let me, I'm here. Let me pull back around and I'll, we'll redo this. Let's take maybe two. Maybe next time just to see what happens. Just give me my money back. Right. Um, <laughs> so I decide, I'm, yes, of course I'll wait. I'm not going to, who do you think I am? I'm not a monster. I'm not going to change my order at you the second You think I'm John window. D. Rockefeller? Because it's like, what, then what do you do? It's like, I already paid. Do I have to like, now I have to like do a mathematical problem where I solve like a sandwich of equivalent value? It's like, no, just let's, I'll wait the six minutes. Let's avoid all the math and I'll just wait. So she has me pull up and I, I'm sitting chilling by the really cool plastic 1970s trash cans uh-huh. that they got there. I don't That's the know. only time I clean out my car. <laughs> it's like they tell you to pull forward and wait. Yeah. I'm like, while I'm here, I may as well jam all this garbage into this trash can. Um, usually I'm like, what is the most offensive thing that I can find to play so when the person has to come out of the restaurant to give give me the food, what is the worst possible thing that, that could be playing? Sometimes I just play Tadpog. Sometimes I'm, <laughs> sometimes I'm just like, I wonder if the person coming out with the food will be like, I think that's the. I heard that dude placed the order. I think that's the dude. I don't. <laughs> is he is, listening? Is, is that Dave? Is that <laughs> Dave from Tadpog? Is that Dave with the car? Oh my god! <laughs> he gave Michael a ride. Remember? <laughs> like Kanye listened to his own music. Is that guy listening to his own podcast? <laughs> yeah, so, man, this shit's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Side note: Sometimes um, John Turley and I will go to lunch, and he will pull up listening to Tadpog, and it's like. We got to stop listening. Like I can't, I can't listen to the show because I just can't deal with that shit. Um, so I pull up. I'm waiting. I am um, not listening to Tad Bog. I'm listening to another wonderful podcast. Um, and the the lady, the the girl, second window girl, comes out with the bag, and she's got the drink. <laughs> she fucking the bag rips. Fries go everywhere the drinks like just spill out like i mean it was just like watching a human rube goldberg device i mean it was just like i don't she had the drinks in the bag no she had the drinks she had the drinks in the hand it was i don't know how heavy was that sandwich (laughs) it the bag fucking ripped and it was like i felt so bad but it was one of those things where it was like Man, I could not help but laugh. Like it was just funny to watch. It was just funny to watch, and the fries went everywhere. And, like the noises that she made was just—I mean, it was just uncontrollable because it was one of these like, oh, oh. <laughs> and then, like I was so like after like really trying to contain my laughter in the car, and then like she looks in the window at me, says, "Just I'm sorry." <laughs> she says, "Do you want me to get you some new fries?" No, just pick up no, all the. Just, little- <laughs> just scoop them on in there. <laughs> Can I get out of the car and just eat them off the sidewalk? <laughs> oh, just so- spray some ketchup on the sidewalk too. We'll just be fine. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be, yeah, it'll be great. And then she says. I'm not gonna get you a new sandwich. I didn't touch the ground. I promise. Oh, shit. <laughs> She, she clearly this happened to her before, and she was threatened to be fired if she spilled one more oh, bag. Man. That sounds like I am not. I am not getting you a new sandwich. That definitely sounds like one of those moments when you had an opportunity for a power play of like, oh no, you're gonna get me another <laughs> sandwich, or I'll have your job. <laughs> I felt bad for her. Look, like, no, I, I want to go ahead and apologize for the shitty story, but I really enjoyed telling that. <laughs> I, I, just reliving it in my mind, like I feel like that's fine. <clears throat> so I just think I might make this a regular thing. I might just go get Wendy's before <laughs> Wendy's. Dave's Dave's hilarious Wendy's, Wendy's corner, and then just share the story. Sometimes it's going to be like everything was fine. I don't know. I mean, I went about 11.35. It becomes very, very dry. Like, the longer I go. It's like fucking, it's like the Wendy's in Lake Wobegon. <laughs> it's about 11.35 here in Lake Wobegon. We've uh, decided to go through the Wendy's tonight. 
You start doing it live. Yeah, I don't know. Like, and I don't have a punchline. <laughs> for the Patreon because, people, the, yeah. for every dollar in the Patreon, we record that many times of us going through Wendy, Wendy's live recording. I could probably like, I could probably get the guy who wants. Like, I could. How about this? I, for the I'm Patre- certain for the- that you could get that guy to follow <laughs> you anywhere. <laughs> for the for the Patreon donors, how about I do like an interview with the guy at the first window for just as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I just like just go as long like I don't leave like I don't pull up the second window until he's like there are like 13 cars behind you I need you to pull up and see how long it goes or like where, you're where the, the conversation one. goes you lead over yeah with the, with the, with recorder. the recorder yeah be like so you want to buy my car and just like stick the recorder in his face Hey, do you remember that time I gave you that ride? Tell me about it. <laughs> what happened? I want to I want to d- describe to our listeners what happened when I gave you the ride. <laughs> Jacob, you have anything? No, man. I'm good. I'm just so jacked to talk about Rogue Squadron. Okay, it's no true. shit. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but, you know. And it's not because it's bad, it's because I It's good. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Maybe it is, but I only watched it because I knew that I would have a very specific reaction to it because it's a it's a flying game and I'm not good at flying games. So it would have been the same thing if we had sat down to play Star Fox, you know. So the perfect episode. Perfect perfect Jacob episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm super glad to be here. Happy that I can happy that I can add to it. Hi. I just got a text message from Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. pretty funny. Good. I'm glad. Dave, did you hear that? Mm-hmm. I do. Um, it sounds like. I'm sorry, Jesus. What it sounds like is it sounds like somebody simultaneously um, had a, a sexy guilt bomb dropped on them while they dropped like a big old thing of fries <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds truly penitent. I mean, which of course everybody knows ushers in a segment that we like to call Dave, Dave reads, reads from Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Okay, guys, bear with me for just a moment while I look this up. Star Wars Red Squadron. <clears throat> <laughs> only Star Wars. Only twenty three minutes in. That's I. I judge that that's not a good sign. I don't know. That's how, usually about what intros run. Yeah, but like Rogue Squadron. Come on. We're gonna. Tyler yeah. says he's prepared. All right. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He does have a paper. It's more than I got. Star Wars colon. Rogue Squadron. Star Wars colon Rogue Squadron, known as Star Wars colon Rogue Squadron 3D on the PC, is an arcade-style action game. Nowhere in there does it say flying. It doesn't say flying game at all anywhere, Jacob. Um, it was developed by Factor 5 and LucasArts. It's uh, the first of three games in the Rogue Squadron series. It was published by LucasArts and Nintendo and released for Windows and the uh, Nintendo 64 in December 1998. And I remember when it came out, and that makes me feel like a very old person. Rogue Squadron Squadron. (laughs) was one of the first games to take advantage of the Nintendo 64's expansion pack. Um, which allows gameplay at a 640 by 480 display resolution instead of the standard 320 by 240. It is set in the fictional Star Wars galaxy as opposed to the real Star Wars galaxy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and in, it was inspired by the Star Wars uh, X-Wing Rogue Squadron comics. Uh, it takes place primarily between the events in the films uh, Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back uh, and Ants. It also it's, it takes place before ants, <laughs> before the Pixar classic <laughs> ants. <laughs> the player controls um, Luke's Luke Skywalker, Luke's Skywalker, <laughs> uh, commander of the elite X-wing pilots known as Rogue Squadron. Uh, as the game progresses, Skywalker and Rogue Squadron fight the Galactic Empire in sixteen missions across. Various planets. Nice. Hey, Dave, I have a I have a somewhat related question for you. Excellent. Did you ever play X Wing versus Tie Fighter? Uh, fuck yes, I did. Because that's uh, for some reason that is always when I think of flying games or space combat games, mm-hmm. that's the number one thing that comes to mind. Because uh, in the same way that 
I judge. So many wrestling fans always talk about no mercy. I feel like I still hear X-Wing versus TIE Fighter come up as sort of the golden standard of the genre. Yeah, some people, um, it's kind of a weird series, right? Because like some people still are like pure TIE Fighter. Like that's the game. But for me, it has always been X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. Yeah. Um, I know like the the co-op in that game, like the online multiplayer was not great. But I think like given the time period, that was a f- super wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, man, that's a, such a good game. Um, I did most of my Star Wars gaming on the PC. Uh, I think w- we talked about this briefly when Wiley was on the show. Um, I feel like the best Star Wars games were for the PC. Because um, like all the all the console Star Wars games, I mean, we had a rocky start with all the Super Star Wars series. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think it got much better um, until mm-hmm. Rogue Squadron. I, I feel like this was this was like, for me playing this game... It was a lot better than I expected it to be. Like, Good. this may be the best Star Wars game I played on a console. Looking into it and doing research, like, this, of all the N64 games we've played so far, and compared to a lot of the Super Nintendo games, this is, man, people fucking love this game. Critics are giving it top scores. People, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of more playthroughs. Yeah. And everyone like, this is the best game on the N64, one of the best games of all time. Like, consistently, people are saying that. Written reviews, people are saying that. Like, people think this is the uh, the pinnacle of, a, of this, kind of, this kind of game in a lot of different ways. Do you agree with it? It's not my, it's not my thing, because I'm like, Jacob, this, like, the flying shooter is, like, with the exception of Star Fox... I've never really been into a game like this. I can see it has a lot of positives about it, and I could still sit down and give it a shot outside of the Star Wars brand, and I feel like that's all the games that we've played so far skate on being Star Wars. All the Star Not, Wars games, yeah. Yeah, they don't They don't care. They could sacrifice being good because they're Star Wars. Games. People are going to buy them and play them just because they have Star Wars written on the box. Mm-hmm. This, however, I don't feel like it does it. What's the difference? Um, why do you exclude Star Fox? What is it about? I know we're going to talk about Star mm-hmm. Fox eventually, but what is it about Star Fox that's different to you as far as like a flight? Probably the shooter? same thing between like Super Tennis and Mario Tennis. The the fantasy bombastic element to it, okay, and all the little extras and maybe the cartoony flavor to it. Something that is just more it's a styling kind of thing. And, and it's not like of all the games I've played like that. I'm not. I just don't like flying games, flying and shooting games all that much, or at least from a third-person perspective. I can do a side-scroller, but yeah. from a third-person perspective, I don't really enjoy them very much. Is this the... Um, oh, that S was very... Whistly. Um, you, need, you need a little water? No, I'm, I'm okay. Um, is this the final Star Wars game on the list, or is there another Star Wars game on Dorkley's Top 25? Because there's already mm. been two. I think this is the last it's one. The last okay, one. I think I, it is. I, I don't have the list because there me. is an N sixty four Star Wars fighting game, right? That was. Uh, I think that was. I don't know if there was an N sixty four release for it. Uh, I think it's called Terras Ka. That was uh, a yeah. fighting game that I played on the PlayStation. Okay, uh, it was not good. Um, that was like one that I rented, and I remember thinking, "All right, this is f- this is fine for a rental. Like sure. I can fuck around as like Luke Skywalker." Um, with a lightsaber, yeah. but I don't want to own this game. Um, I know that Pod Racing is another N64 release. Oh, people, I've heard lots of people and really enjoyed the Pod Racing. I've heard positive things about that. Um, I played that on the PC. That was fun. That one was actually one that John Turley and I played uh, when we worked together uh, at Apex. Um, and he even mentioned he was asking what we were going to talk about this week, and I said, "Oh, uh, Star Wars, Star Wars Rogue Squadron." And he said, "Oh yeah, I remember you playing that uh, back at the office." I was like, "No, I never played it. Um, I always did like um, X Wing Alliance or X Wing versus Tie. Um, I actually did play this game. I just completely forgot about it when I started it up on the N sixty four and started playing it. I was like, "Oh yeah, okay. I, he was right. I totally played this game." Um, I guess does that say something about how they all kind of blend in together yeah. then? It's the same ships in different scenarios. Yeah, I think it's also because 
Rogue Squadron. I remember playing, um, I think, Rogue Squadron 2 on the GameCube. And, like, they definitely do, like, start to blend together. Um, Well, but I think also especially whenever you're playing something that you um, love as much as, like, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter, it's probably, like, when you're in a certain uh, uh, time it's easy to fold everything into it so that you have like forgotten that you've played Rogue Squadron because you just folded it into the X-Wing versus TIE Fighter experience, sort of. It's also one of those things where it's like 15 years ago. Yeah, And well, there's like the a shitload been. of Star Wars games that are, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. space combat. I mean, that's like a staple. Yeah. Here's the thing. This is the part of the Star Wars universe that I have zero interest in. And like, yeah. like when I think of Star Wars, I think of... The Jedi Order and lightsabers and like space combat seemed, even though I know it's in the future, yes, they have laser swords. It's in the past. It's in the past. Yeah. It's in the past. Yeah. It's a long, long time long. ago. Oh, okay. And a galaxy well, far, far away. Okay. Well, that's the spin on it. Mm, well, it seems anachronistic to me almost. It, it certainly is. Sure. So I don't, and like, I've just never been into like, I don't know, the whole space, like seeing them. Seeing Darth Vader, when I saw Darth Vader sitting in a spaceship, I was like, "What the fuck is this about?" He he looks silly sitting in sitting in this this fighter flying around in space. I don't disagree with that, really. And I also, it never. I don't know why all of the ships aren't painted black. Well, because then we couldn't see them in the movie. I know, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but like. You need the you need good contrast. Yeah, it's a but, contrast thing. Yeah, but that's the thing is that outside of the world of the movie, they uh-huh. just fucking sneak up on people. <laughs> can I can I say something that is a complete and total non sequitur? I mean, this is a podcast and so. doesn't make any sense. Whenever I whenever I was watching you play this game, I got a, a I had a reaction to it, and it was like, huh? You know what this game makes me think of? Echo the Dolphin. And I was trying to figure out what Why? the connective tissue was <laughs> between this game and Echo the Dolphin. Did and you it figure was, it out? I think that it just became a thing that it was like I, I was watching and I whenever I, I would never like get anywhere in Echo the Dolphin. I think that that was it. I was watching this game thinking, yeah, the last time I really had this feeling of like watching someone else do something that I had no <laughs> ability at was Echo the Dolphin. I think that that's it, maybe. So you're definitely coming back for Echo the Dolphin? But I feel, <laughs> I feel like there's, I don't know, I just feel like there's something there and I just kind of wanted to put it out there in the I world. I mean, I can sort of see it because... Thank you. You're, God, thank you. The way another, I mean, because I guess my problem with kind of this kind of, this game is like you fly towards something, you shoot it, if you don't quite miss it, and you have to go way past it and you kind of turn around and get disoriented and then... You're shooting it again, and then you're turning on and disorienting yourself again, and I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I played not my bag, played the first few levels, and I just felt like I'm kind of just aimlessly, kind of boringly just flying around and trying to see these little dots and then shooting the dots and then going around. I'll say it was very smooth. There's a lot of polish to it. In the game's defense, you were playing tapped out while you were playing it. I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> I did see you. I am going to put you on blast because I feel like this game deserves some credit. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I mean, and but I, I totally get if it's if if you don't like this kind of game, you're not going to like the game. Yeah. You're just not going to like it. It's like a race. If you don't like racing games, you're not going to like a racing game. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Chrono Trigger had the level of praise that this game has on the internet. But if you don't like that kind of game, yeah, it doesn't matter how much everybody loves it. If it's just not your thing. And I can definitely see, um, like, one thing I commented on to you is that it sounded good. Yeah. Um, and it even, I feel like they took advantage of the uh, the limitations because the audio between people sounds like it's coming through a radio. You know, it's it's well done in that respect, and I think that that's immersive which is hopefully intentional yeah you hope <laughs> and is not just like well this we recorded like this in shitty. a tin can right. here I, i've got some some spaceship star wars spaceship questions for you dave all right why why are the ships from the rebel alliance and the empire so different so that you can tell them apart when they're shooting at each other in the movie because there's no like in world explanation probably but Whatever that explanation is, is bullshit that just explains that they need to look different in the movie. Okay. Why is the Millennium Falcon, like, such a good ship? Because um, 
It can do the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs. It's just fast and like a straight, straightaway shot run? Uh, it's a fast ship. Yeah, it's okay. a fast ship. Um, and it's um, a smuggler ship. Because so watch, watching it maneuver in this game, because you get to drive it in, in this game, looks clunky as fuck. You have to unlock it, which is, <laughs> from what I understand, I think you have to gold medal every mission. Um, which is um, wow, yeah, <laughs> like it's a it's a huge thing. It's either you have to gold medal or silver medal all of them. I didn't fucking unlock it. Um, well, it's you were it. I was watching you, and it felt like you were not great at the game, but like no. solid. Um, and oh, no. you know, it's you, a tough game. It seemed like it. It's a tough game. It seemed especially like it seemed hard to medal. Not necessarily hard to like pass a level, yeah. But it seemed very hard to medal because I mean, there's bronze medals, silver medals, and gold medals. I think the highest I got, I got one silver medal, and the rest were just past the mission or a bronze medal. Yeah, I can't imagine gold medaling the entire game. What? Why is the Empire putting any money into at ats whatsoever? Um, when all you have to do that is just feels like a really great any ship can just. Tie a rope around it, and that's just it. Well, and that's what I see that in every single game. Mm-hmm. You just tie ropes around legs. Mm-hmm. That's that's a whole level or two levels. Because uh, they look cool, and sometimes you just need a giant robot cow. Okay. And I wonder if that's well. It's the same thing as um, is it the Empire's hubris? Like, well, no. We're just gonna make these no. big fucking things that walk. Have Have either of you guys listened to the Malcolm Gladwell book, David and Goliath? Mm-mm. In it, at one point, he's talking about um, sort of the misconception that people have now that, oh, there's no way that David could have beaten Goliath because David is so small and Goliath is so huge. That's not it. It's the classic sort of rock, paper, scissor argument that David was a slinger. David's ability was in the thing that Goliath was not good at. And because of that, that is why David was able to slay Goliath. Um, and I think that it's just that it's for a for a, a ground offensive, adats are second to none, but they are able to be beaten by a small light ship, which is why, in theory, hopefully you've got some air support if you're the Empire. Okay, and not always. I mean, because I mean, uh, and by not always, I mean they're not always effective because I. I you tried to a lasso a fucking a, a, an ad at like a bunch of times and just fucking crashed into it, Are which they... also happens, you know, in the movies. Uh, Empire, that's the only time the ad ats show up. Unfortunately, I, I'm all for more robot cows, personally. I always used to call them ATATs. Yeah, I did too until, but ad ats just more fun to say. The, and the, but it gets tricky when you're talking about ATSTs because you, you can't say ats. Ats. <laughs> yeah. Because what those are the ones with just two legs that are very small. Yeah, yeah, those are the ones with two legs. Hmm. Okay. This is a game. <laughs> Do you it's, want me to talk about it? Uh, yeah. You, I mean, you played. You had more patience with it than I did. I mean, I I don't want to shit on it. Yeah. I just have to emphasize that it's not my thing. But I can see that for what it is, it's it's good and polished and because could be, it's playable without being a Star Wars game. You didn't enjoy it enough to feel compelled to talk about it. Yeah. I thought it was a good game. Um, I think there's a good point to be said about a lot of the Star Wars games blending together. Like, I think that's absolute truth. Um, but what I think is different about Rogue Squadron is that it's more of an arcade-style game where X-Wing versus TIE is certainly more slanted towards uh, space flight sim. Uh, this is certainly more of like a shooter because you've got... I mean, you're Luke Skywalker, you're flying your X-Wing, an Imperial shoots you, well, whatever. Here you are again, Luke Skywalker in, in the X-Wing. You don't have to restart the mission every time. So there's like, there's not this realism to it. There's not this second level of realism to it like there is in the X-Wing versus TIE series. Um, the game is hard, and I think that, I mean, as a, I remember playing this on the PC. I never got to Chapter 2. Wow. And it was one of those things where it's like, and I was playing this at a time in my life where I had nothing but time. And I mean, it was one of those where I hit a wall and it was like, well, I mean, I guess I don't, I mean, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to, I don't know how to be any better other than continuing to play it. Mm -hmm. Um, Which, 
I guess would probably be my only complaint is that the game spikes in difficulty rapidly. It goes from, it's like Mortal Kombat 2 <laughs> in the sense where it's like single player Mortal Kombat 2, you can fight an opponent, win, and then the second opponent is just like, the computer's just like, oh, okay, I see. I see how it's going to be. Well, we're going to crank the difficulty up to 12 and see how you do on this fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it kind of felt like that to me. I know one thing that you were talking about, uh, going back to the the realism aspect of it, is that you craved, like if someone died on a mission, you kind of wanted it to be like, well, it just keeps going. Yeah, and I, on the next mission, you just don't have that guy. I think that would be great. And it's like, uh, if a mission fails, I think it would be awesome if it's like, mission failed. Okay, next mission. What's the repercussions right. of, what are the repercussions of you failing that mission? I think that's something they could do now. That would be really cool. Like, yeah. I would play that game. I, like, that would be, like, I think the best thing to add to a new Rogue Squadron game. It's, it would have to be resource-driven then. Like, you just don't have this resource to go on with. I think it's rank-driven. Uh, but resources are great, too. Because um, this game uses ranks, but they use it as difficulty levels. Like, you start out the game, you are um, a cadet. Or trainee, I'm sorry. Um, and you can name yourself three mm-hmm. letters. I chose come. Um, you chose ass. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Tadpog tradition, I mean, that's straight up <laughs> Uniracer style. Those names were cool well, enough were cool for Rogue Squadron. Man, deep, deep, almost <laughs> deepest cut. <laughs> so, I mean, nothing's better than reading Cum Cadet on a screen. Or Ash Trainee. So. <laughs> <laughs> so right there, I feel like you get your money's worth. <laughs> But you start out as a trainee, and what that essentially designates is you're playing the easiest missions in the game. And then once you finish all those easy missions, you get promoted in rank, and now you're a cadet. And you continue to promote in rank throughout the game. But I think it would be cool if um, there's a scenario in a where you are assigned a rank, and as you play the game, if you lose a mission, you may lose a rank. Um, and if you, you win a mission, you may gain a rank, um, to the point where, um, I guess the game ends when you're just, they're like, no, you're horrible. Get out. (laughs) You're fired. Get out of here. We can't keep giving you planes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You're bad at planing. You're very good at Jedi stuff. What do you think it feels like to pilot an ad at? Like when when you're in one of those things and you see the snow speeders coming up, like I mean, is it just like, oh fuck, they got those? It'd be like riding an elevator just over and over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, maybe he'll crash. Okay, he crashed. Okay, all right. Here's another one. Is he gonna? Cr- nope, nope, nope. Now we're crashing. <laughs> all right. Well, I think it has to feel like you you just have to count on your backup. Like if you don't have backup, you're probably like, oh shit, I'm. Probably yeah, we're about done. to die. Yeah. And you try and figure out a way to eject, but um which surely they have like an eject. Surely they have like a It's the Empire, man. I don't think they've got an eject. Really? Well, yeah, I think it's pretty much like you're in this thing. <laughs> straps come out and anything that holds you to the chair as you fall over and die. <laughs> one one complaint I had early on and watching you play it is I feel like this game lighting wise is really, really dark. Yeah, there are some dark parts, and I don't know. Um, I experienced it on your television. I experienced it on my television. I, I don't know if that was a design decision. If it was, I feel like it was a poor design decision. Mm-hmm. I had several crashes in the game that was just due to me not being able to orient myself when I was pointing at the ground or a mountain. I mean, obviously, I knew I didn't need to go that direction. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, if, if I can get the brown off of the screen... I'll probably be better. Mm-hmm. But there are like... Um, well, think- there's one, you're flying through a gulch or something or a valley. And so it was and trying to shoot at uh, satellite dishes. And, yeah. and that seemed so frustrating to, to try and figure out, okay, wait, wait, where, where is up? Right. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. Help, please. There is a uh, the a, a mission or two before that, which is an it's a night mission, um, and it's the city of Corella, and it there's skyscrapers. It is night, so the I mean it's not black. Fortunately, like the sky isn't black, mm. but it's fucking dark blue. Uh, the buildings are black, uh, but they have lights on them, and the ground is totally black. So it is like one of those things where it's like. 
you just gotta like figure out where those buildings yeah. are because like yeah. you totally crash into those buildings. But like I get it. Like I get for some reason that doesn't bother me. For some reason it doesn't, and and I don't think it's a Star Wars thing. I think it's like when I was playing this game, the thought did cross my mind. This is this is a Nintendo hard game, and by that I mean like they're not fucking helping you at all because it's like well this is a night mission what the fuck do you want it's fucking hard it's gonna be hard to shoot shit at night <laughs> i feel you know they're not yeah. li- they're not like well okay let's highlight the things that you gotta shoot and let's um they do give you a radar where you can see enemies on it but i mean that has limited use too mm-hmm. uh, and they're usually not clearly marked it's also one of those things where it's like they tell you what the mission is. Like there's a voiceover and text that tells you what the mission is at the beginning of the mission. If you don't pay attention to that, you are not going to get through the mission because there's no help that pops up where it's like, you just killed six probe droids. Now do this thing. Yeah. It's just straight up. Like you got to fucking pay attention. You got to watch the thing and you got to do the missions in the way, like it's the very specific way that they were meant to be done, mm-hmm. if, which is like, completely unfucking heard of now like a game like that like just if it exists now i can't name it to you because i feel like everything now is like exactly like that or it's like you killed six imperial droids now go to this thing here's the here's the the breadcrumb trail for you to follow to the tie fighters and we'll highlight them in green these shoot the green things Mm. i mean you're right yeah which isn't appealing to me but I'm a crotchety, um, I'm a crotchety dude who likes to engage in his games. Like to actually fucking play your fucking video games. Yeah, that's right. That's all right. No, I can I can understand that. I can understand that. But that was overall like that was that was the only real structural gripe of mine is just how dark it is. Otherwise, I can't find any big fault in it that's just not related to my own personal bias. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I know. This is so bad. This is a I feel like I'm not like contributing at all to this. Um, not, or, and we're really we're leaning on you to do it. Too, <laughs> so. Well, you fly around and you just and you shoot yeah. shit. I, I mean, mean, there's without not- me going into like some real fucking Star Wars <laughs> shit, like I mean, I can tell you about the fucking things that you fly. You fly X-wings. I mean, you fly the things you, you fucking do, you expect do, to you fly. You do have a lot of different ships. Well, the, and there's uh one of the I, I saw the the speeder at one point, right? The the two pronged guy. I don't remember what it's the called. The snow speeder. No, the white, orange, and oh, yellow. The, there's a Naboo starfighter. Yes, which is the best ship in the game. It is. There's a, a story behind this ship. Um, when the game the game released before the Phantom Menace came out, um, but they decided to put the Naboo starfighter in the game. It's a it's a ship that's in the phantom menace uh they decided to put the ship in the game uh but it wouldn't be it would be unlockable with a code that they would release after the phantom menace uh it's a total it's a total marketing thing yeah um but it's interesting because it was one of those scenarios where it was in the game and like no one really knew so which is that's really also a thing that's like pretty impossible today it's like really difficult for someone to develop a game release it and someone not um, like immediately data mine it and be like yeah oh look at this this thing is in the game why is why is why can't i get this thing yeah um so i i think it sucks that it's the best ship in the game because that you're talking about anachronistic i mean that's like it's ancient technology right it's older it's older than the thing that should be i feel like better yeah but I mean, the things like the the Tie Fighters and the X Wings are based on this technology. Yeah. If the Nabu Starfighter was so good, why are we not all just flying fly those <laughs> Starfighters? Yeah. Did the plans? What What'd you do well, with the plans? If, if humans came from monkeys, why Why are there still monkeys? <laughs> all right. Why? Hey, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> but the, what? There's the X Wing. The Y wing, like it's all the latter half of the alphabet. X wing, Y wing. There's A wing, A wing. Okay, there's yeah. an A wing. A wing's one of my favorites. It's a uh, it's a fast ship. It doesn't have good shields. You can pretty much get knocked out in one or two hits. But it is uh, it's the fastest ship, and I think that's really cool to play um, to play that style because you have to like 
it's all or nothing. That ship is all or nothing. Yeah. Um, it's and it's super fucking dangerous, which is exhilarating. I think I would need all of the shields because I would get so frustrated uh, being shot out of the air by something that I didn't see coming. Yeah, that'll happen a lot. And yeah, I yeah, I can only imagine. Um, and particularly that I would just say to myself, how 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 could I have possibly seen that? How could I have known that that was coming in my way? I don't know. It would be cool if you got some kind of like force indicator, like Spidey sense or something. Like yeah. if you're playing as Luke Skywalker, it would be kind of cool to like just kind of like get a couple moments notice that that, that uh, makes like something's sense. coming in. That would yeah. be well, and also because and hard mode is playing as Wedge Antilly, so you don't have that, right? Um, and also because you don't have, I imagine, all of the information that is available to you as a pilot. Like I imagine that you have. Uh, you know, just beyond the radar, you probably have all sorts of other sensors and information all around you, but instead you're just looking at the back of the ship, which is why when I thought, when you were saying about how it's Nintendo hard, I agree that it's uh, probably Nintendo hard and that like a night mission is much harder, but, um, but like we have now today we have like thermal information and we have all sorts of different sort of data streams that can help us figure out what we are looking at. Um, so I would just sort of assume that they would also have that technology. Maybe not. It is a long time ago. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we can always fall back on that. Like, I feel like that was like the perfect catch all for him to be like a long time ago, galaxy far, far away. I don't know. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Down at C4, but they got laser swords. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Did you guys have any achievements? No, I didn't. I, uh, I said one to you. Mm-hmm. And Remember what it was? Uh, Millennium Falcon Punch. Right. <laughs> what would you call a Millennium Falcon Punch? I don't know. I guess you un- unlock the Millennium Falcon, and then and then it also gets unlocked in F Zero, and then you race it. As <laughs> you have a, you get a code, and the Nabu Starfighter also uh-huh. appears. In that <laughs> uh, let's see. I had from a Buick Eight. Because apparently you can also unlock like a 1962 Buick yeah. and fly around. Yeah. So huh. it's a code. Yeah. So you that ha, the, when you unlock the Buick, that's that's the achievement you get for that. Have you read from a Buick Eight? No, I didn't like it. So I was curious because that was like I love Stephen King, mm-hmm. but that was one book where I was like, "Whew, man!" Did not. I have enjoy only that. read the Dark Tower series from Stephen King. You I haven't did. even read The Stand. I started The Stand and didn't like it and stopped. I think I that's can, fair. I can see why you wouldn't like it. I don't it's like stopping so, books at all, but like I got 12 hours in and I was just like, man, oh man, I just don't like it. I get it. It's so tonally different from The Dark Tower, which is this kind of wonderful, mythic, old I like West, fantasy. You so, know? Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, gosh, I, uh, Cell. I loved Cell. His recent stuff is good too. You know, he has. Up top, man. That's rare for me to find another person who liked Cell a lot. That's really fucking rare. I thought the end was kind of a fart in the wind, yeah. but like... That's the, Stephen King, though. Yeah, yeah. The journey is so compelling and so interesting. Um, and that first chapter, that first bit is just as intense as writing can get. I it's a good it. book. And the audiobook's the great, Jennifer too. The Jennifer Lopez movie, The Cell, is not yeah. the same thing. No, different cell. <laughs> because that's the first cell I ever heard of. So people say that. I was like, is that the book version no. like, of that movie? It's in the novel. Stephen King's novelization of the movie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the audiobook's read by Campbell Scott, who does a great oh. job with it. So, for what that's worth. And then my other one was Misa Get a Starship. And that is where you that that is where you get the Naboo Starship. Awesome. So... Well, first, all right, let's let's pick it back up. So I said I okay. came prepared. Mm-hmm. So Star Wars, there's a lot of aliens in Star Wars. Oh, fuck. I'm not going to be. So I have a quiz for you about aliens in cartoons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all right, good. So you have to name the alien, Wh- aliens, or what the group of aliens are called. What was the last quiz that you gave? Because I I don't remember what it was, but I remember I the got famous gluttons. Yep, I got all of them correct, all of them. It's pretty good. You did better than you did better than us. I was very proud. Why why is that one not the one that's happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna know any of these. Sure you will. All we'll right. be okay. Thanks. You believe in me? Aliens from cartoon too. quiz. Okay. Question one: 
these two aliens had a cookbook about how to cook humans. Cook cook for humans. Cook cook 40 humans. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I don't know their names. They're the aliens from The Simpsons. Kodos and Kang. Correct. You said you won't even know one. Yeah. And you already know two. This alien was banished through time and space by his kind for creating a doomsday device. He ended up on prehistoric Earth, where very few people could see him, and those. but he referred to humans as dum-dums. Oh, um, what's his name from the fucking Flintstones? Yes. Um, oh, no. And people are screaming right can now. Can we skip it? Can we skip it? Come back to it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's kind. This alien is second fiddle to 25-star general of the Democratic Order of Planets. He reproduces <laughs> through touch and is known to like Asian humans. Oh. I don't know this Oh, at my. All. Uh, <laughs> Kip. You're close. Ah. Uh, no, I don't know. I, I, I'll take that. It's Kif. Kif. But yeah, it's from Kif, Kif Croker Futurama. from Futurama. Oh, okay. I, that's close enough. No, I don't think so. It, it, Kip, Kip, Kif, you want yeah. you to hear his name. I think it's fine. This alien is the last of his kind from the Red Planet, and some argue he could give Superman a run for his money. Um, Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter is correct. John Jones. Spike Spiegel. <laughs> <laughs> He's from Mars. This alien hides out in a CIA member's attic and can only go out when he dresses in various disguises. It's a cartoon. It's, it's yeah. from American Dad. Oh, I don't it's know. The alien from Gary? No, it's not Gary. Gary's right? the fish. Is it like is Gary is the it fish? Paul or something like that? <laughs> it's like a regular name. It's like a regular ass name. Sorry, Paul. Listen. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it's fine to have a regular it's name. It's a regular ass name. You know, like for Dave some, or Tyler. For some basic ass bitch. <laughs> like Paul. <laughs> um, that, it'll come to us. Skip it. Skip it. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> I still can't remember the Flintstones one. It's driving we'll me crazy. There. I we'll see him. I know, I know. This alien <laughs> lost his body when he came here from another dimension. He builds another body where he sets in its stomach. Uh, that's Krang. Krang yeah. is correct. That was the From easiest Tangent one. And- <laughs> like, for the record, I would say that's the easiest one. For me. This group of aliens came to Earth and stole the skills of Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, Larry Johnson, Muggsy Bogues, and Sean Bradley. Jacob, go for it, man. It's the Monstars. It is Shit. the Monstars. Hit them high, hit them high, hit them high, hit them high, hit them low, hit them low, hit them low, hit them low. <laughs> There is a T-shirt of Michael Jordan palming this alien's head <laughs> like a bee ball. That's Marvin the Martian. Yeah, it is. Correct. It's Marvin the Martian. Man, I wish I had that T-shirt still. <laughs> It'd still be baggy on me. It would still be baggy on me today. That just occurred to me that you had a T-shirt with a Looney Tunes character on it. Yep. All right. Absolutely. And not only that, but... a. Uh, my, Michael Jordan as well on one t-shirt. <laughs> that says a lot about me, I realize. This alien is from the Anniverse and pilots the ship The Righteous Indignation and fights in the war between the United Animal Federation against the Toad Empire. Absolutely do not know this one. And if Okay, you- I know that was a long question. <laughs> Could you read it again? Because it might be it might be Bucky O'Hare. But I but I don't know. I need to hear the question. Oh, this alien is from the Anniverse and pilots the ship The Righteous Indignation and fights in the war between the United Animal Federation against the Toad Empire. I don't have I don't have any other guesses. I think that's that that's, a, that's my I think best that's a guess. great guess. So we're gonna go Bucky O'Hare. Bucky O'Hare is correct. Wow, <laughs> wow, Dave from three. I read that comic when I was a kid. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if the comic was based on the wow. cartoon series or vice versa, or if they were all just based on the fucking action mm-hmm. figures. This, these aliens play hockey and defend their home planet from invaders. Whew, that's a short question. That is. They play hockey, and they protect their home planet mm-hmm. against invaders. Mm-hmm. They play hockey? Jacob, they play hockey. <laughs> and they They're, they're hockey home. aliens. <laughs> Listen, just because I know more about sports You're the than sports you guy. doesn't mean I know everything. You're the sports guy. I'm the alien guy. I'm not the alien guy. 
I uh, yeah, I don't know. Shit, skip it. <laughs> we'll come back to it later. <laughs> All right, that was the tenth oh, question. So right. now we're back around again. All right, let's workshop okay. what the alien in the Flintstones is name. All right, Lebo. Read. <laughs> Read the meet, meet. <laughs> and for everyone who is listening to this right now and knows it and has known it this entire time, I apologize. We're going to hear about it. I know we're going to hear about it. I get it. it. This alien was banished through time and space by his kind for creating a doomsday device. He Great Gazoo. Ended- right? Great Gazoo. Great Gazoo is correct. Oh, all right. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Oh, my God. Good, good answer. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this alien hides out in a CIA member's attic. And can only go out in various disguises. All right. It's a regular ass name. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Gary. I think it's I, it's Gary. You think it's Gary? I you I don't know American Gary Dad feels at all. Right to me. But okay, I could what's be the wrong. fish's name then? I don't know. I do not know. <sighs> and Gary might be the kid's name in, in all honesty. Gary, I don't think Gary's well, maybe it is. I've seen like Who four names episodes. Their of this kid show. Gary. <laughs> you wanna go Gary? Listen, it's, you know, it's it's up to you, but Gary is the only guest that I have. Whoever he is, he reminds me of Andy Dick. Partial credit? <laughs> <laughs> yep. So Gary? Well, let's go with Gary. All right. Gary is incorrect. Oh. Roger. 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 Some regular ass. Regular ass Roger. <laughs> the fish's name is Klaus. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess no one's named Gary. My bad. <laughs> is anyone named Gary? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that kid who I said put his finger in my butthole. That's about it. <laughs> that's okay. All I had was Paul. <laughs> that's, it was we were between Gary and Paul, like two I, names that don't <laughs> exist in the entire continuity of American Dad. I will say too, though, is I, I don't know that we ever would have come to Roger. No fuck I no. Feel, I feel confident that we would have, with a hint, maybe. Yeah, maybe. rhymes with Smodger. <laughs> Oh, Smeagol. Yeah. Uh, the Dodgers? Was the Do- was like the Harlem Globetrotter Scooby-Doo thing? Did the Dodgers go in an episode of American Roger. Dad? It's Broger. Broger. <laughs> and the last question, which we completely don't know. These aliens on, we got play you. hockey and defend their planet from invaders. Uh, they play hockey, Jacob. <laughs> just looking out into the middle distance. Hockey. Let's just make something up. Hockey cats? I feel like Hockey Cat's probably a good answer. Hockey Cat's final <laughs> answer. If I told you, this came, this was the last, it only lasted for one season. Sure. And Disney was on a sort of a kick of having these animals in their shows. Mighty Ducks? I mean, yeah, you say Disney, I think Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Half credit, Mighty Ducks is correct. Yeah, okay. I did not yeah. know that. They were that anthropomorphic ducks. I did not ducks. know that they had a... Yeah. No, well, now that you say it, I do remember it. I One remember, had like, like a the techno-looking looking hockey mask. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No, I don't remember it at all. I believe you, <laughs> but... Because it does sound like something they would... Let's cash in on this duck train. Plus, we got these movies. Let's do it. Let's the Mighty Ducks. Do it. The I'm Mighty sure duck. it'll be last more in a season. The... I love the first two. I love those movies. Yeah. Like, I I bought... The, like, I own the DVDs. That's how much I love them. And I still have them. So the fact that I still have DVDs is pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. So 8.5 out of 10. It's pretty good. That's pretty not good. bad. Not bad. He, he, hey, man, come on. Can we just... Let me. I'm going to throw something out here. Can we workshop something real quick? Is there another quiz or are we cool? Then we're cool. <laughs> okay. Can we... Jacob, how do you feel? Can we just stop talking about video games? Can we just do like quizzes and stuff now? <laughs> like, have we gotten to the point where like we don't have to like? Because I feel like the worst and the most unfun part I had this show was talking about the fucking video game. Well, so I, I realize this is a video game podcast. Um, let me put that in quotation marks. But it was like I feel like intro stories, fun game, just fucking not fun at all, and then quiz fun. That's what that's the plight of doing a list <laughs> because sometimes they're just. The game's not going to have a lot of meat to it. I don't know, all. man. I feel like consistently it's like, man, because last time we recorded, I was like, good episode, except for all that video game stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that that's true either. And I, But I do think that one thing that I have said to Tyrone as further um, encouragement. Clean it up. Yeah. No. We know. <laughs> as further encouragement to try and, uh, you know, maybe uh, drive people toward the Patreon is to do like one extra show a month and for that to not necessarily have to feature 
anything that is video game related, but beyond that, for it to not even have to be the both of you, you know, mm-hmm. maybe once a month, you know, Dave, you do the sit down interview with the guy from Wendy's and, you know, and that's just it. Or mm-hmm. maybe, you know, Tyrone and I play the, you know, here are the 36 questions that make you fall in love. And then we stare into each other's eyes and we decide if we're in love at the end. How um, about that one's the video game one? And then the rest, like all the re- the regular episodes are just us fucking around. <laughs> asking quizzes about aliens. If you want to hear video game talk, pay in. Otherwise, it's right. just random bullshit. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like we've reached the point, right? We've reached the point I, where like, I think people will be like, ah, they don't need to talk. They barely talk about video games now. They don't need to like <laughs> I will about say, video games. And I will say this, too. In all honesty, I think that the people who listen to you guys uh, listen and enjoy your personalities enough that they would continue to listen to it. I don't think anyone new would listen to it, but I think that the people that you have... But that's not happening anyway, yeah. so I feel like we're okay. <laughs> so if you guys want those 200 uh, five-star reviews, it's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> mm. But I also think that there's a lot of gold ahead of you on this list uh, that is going to... Because you guys, I could talk about... Mario 64 all day. I could talk about No Mercy all day. I could talk about that's it. That's I guess that's probably <laughs> it. <laughs> See, it's it's kind you of about well, you can still like yeah, I could talk about Fire Pro but, Wrestling. But stuff that's on the list, you know, like I don't Turok the Dinosaur Hunter isn't on there, which it's I think is there. super uh, odd. Yeah. Um not because it's such a great game, but because it's I just feel like a lot of people I feel like it, it was a big an early was big made. deal yeah, game. Yeah. 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 Um but I think that there's I think that there's a lot ahead of you that is there to look forward to. All right, so decide if we keep doing the video game thing. I think so. I think right. you can. Put a little will. We'll, we'll finish out this list and the eventual list. We'll yeah. finish out 2015, <laughs> and then we'll decide. <laughs> we'll reconvene. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll put a pin in it. I'm really. It'll uh, have to be something that like tad, and then will make sense for the rest for the rest of it. Yeah, we gotta make a slow. If we do it, we gotta make a slow transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, one letter at a time. Right. Tad Poe. <laughs> We're Tad Poe for a year. Tyler and Dave, punch our gooch. <laughs> <laughs> we got to have Miller for that. we got to have Miller for that. <laughs> oh, man. I make my signal at you that makes Nicole laugh. Hey, Tyler. What's up? Hey, man. Yes, Dave. Parts of this episode, I feel like, were really fun. Mm-hmm. I, so let me... How we, I had I kind of I had fun at parts today, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> but I got I've got a before we close things out. I have a couple, a few maybe, questions for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the first of which is, if you were to give this game a beard, naturally that mm-hmm, sums up mm-hmm. how you feel about it. Uh, what kind of beard would it be? I would have to give it the beard of Qui Gon Jinn. Hmm. Just because of the Star Wars thing, or Star because- Wars thing, and it's like. There's more. There's. I feel like maybe to me there's more build up to it than an, an actual like big length to it. Like Qui Gon Jinn is important, but his role in the Star Wars universe is very small. Like I feel like this part is is important, but just this little thing that happened between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Does this have anything to do with it burning in a fire or anything like that? Yeah, uh, it got cut in half by <laughs> by a, a, a the badass two two bladed lightsaber. Um, have I mentioned this on the show about how I think I have, uh, how ridiculous it was that Qui-Gon Jinn spoilers. If you haven't seen the Phantom Menace, don't, um, <laughs> but if you, if you haven't watched it and you plan on watching it or just watch the fight between Qui-Gon and Darth Maul, it's yeah. fine. Really? That's all you need to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, his death, Qui-Gon's death was spoiled before the movie in the original soundtrack. Because the soundtrack released before the movie. Have I talked you about this talked on the about show? This. I want to, I mean. It deserves bitching about it again. I got to bitch about it. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just one of those things where it's like, all right, Qui-Gon Jinn's funeral. I guess there's going to be a guy in this movie named Qui-Gon Jinn. And that motherfucker's going to die. <laughs> or, I mean, That's he could have been a funeral director. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's, Maybe. that's the twist I kept waiting for when I was watching the movie. It's like, all right, clearly he's a Jedi, but maybe it doesn't work out for him. He figures this isn't this career path. So, he's got to like, Jedi, we could all die out for <laughs> any reason, but people are going to keep dying. So I basically get them the funeral business now. That would have been okay. I would have yeah. been on board. <laughs> 
Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses, mm-hmm. what kind of glasses would you give it? Uh, that that orange visor that is on Luke Skywalker's uh, piloting helm. Yeah. That's a good one. That is a good one. That makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. Is it because um, yeah. <laughs> some N64s are orange? Yep. Okay. <laughs> that makes even more That's sense exactly now. why. I've got another question. Mm-hmm. This is for both of you. This is for everyone at the table except okay. for me. I'd be really good at it because I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe not. I'm looking at I'm looking at this price here and maybe not. I bet it's a lot higher than what you paid for it. What I want to know is how much is this game on Amazon used? I also want to say that this wasn't in the Wikipedia entry, but it is on uh, this game detail. It's also this game is also known as in Japan Star Wars colon Shutsu Gaiki Rogue Chutai. Nice. So there you go. Good. I yeah. feel like that was something that was missing earlier. I'm gonna say ten ninety nine. Oh, dude. Ten ninety nine from Tyler. What was that? What you were going? No, I I, I was in my head was twelve dollars, uh-huh. and I just feel like a dollar and one cent away is kind of too close. That's the, that's the Coles game. Yeah. I can't. I so I'm I'm going to say seventeen dollars. I'm gonna I'm gonna say sixteen fifty. Sixteen fifty. Sixteen fifty. And do you remember the name of the alien from American Dad? Roger. Great. Gary Roger. <laughs> Pretty sure it's Paul. Pretty sure it was Gary the Fish. <laughs> Klaus. Klaus the German. <laughs> Actual retail value of Star Wars Rogue Squadron used for the N64 at the time of this recording is eleven dollars and ninety-nine cents. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, if you would have said twelve dollars, you would have been a fucking penny over. over. And I would. And, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that I'm so much further off now. I'm but so you glad. you're really wrong. Yeah, you're a little wrong. I would. It, yeah, it, that's would how Jacob so much, lives his life. <laughs> I would so much better. I would so much rather be way wrong than just a tiny <laughs> little bit wrong. Don't pay that much for this game. Like you can probably find it for five dollars just about anywhere that's not Amazon. Yeah, because that's like yeah. this game was super cheap. Super cheap. I guess there's just so many of them. Yeah. I don't know if there had to be a whole lot of these. Yeah. Which I hear, I've read a little bit about Conker's Bad Fur Day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I realized that it had a small-ish run, right? But I mean, it wasn't, from what I hear, it wasn't that small. Like, it's not that rare of a game. Mm-hmm. I've read so many things on Reddit where people argue about, why is this game so much money? And no one really has a good answer. Hmm. I'll look into it more. I'll look okay. into it more for our, our Conker's bad. So, maybe yeah. Sam is also quite the collector. So Sam, we haven't heard. We had a Sam call in a really long time. You know why? Because we forget shit. Like he's the dude who asked us to play Super Mario Sunshine. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> we're not Sam. very good friends. So he's like, I'm not gonna call those assholes. Yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. So, but if if you know Sam, call in and give us an explanation. It'd be it, nice. It'd be if nice. there is anyone out there who knows, it's probably Sam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard your sexy British tones in, in quite some time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We done? We're closing it out. Anything else? Hmm. Yeah, let's close. It I know. Out. Yeah, I know. Thanks Dave. for helping us make this episode, Jacob. If you hadn't been here, it would have been way worse. I don't think that that's true, but I appreciate it. I appreciate the comment. It's good to see in your face, anyway. Hey, it's mm-hmm. good to have my face be seen. Mm-hmm. I mean, by us. No, yeah. Right. No. no, anybody. <laughs> Anyone. That's, I just, I like it. I'm, li- I'm like Kenna. I just keep turning around to make sure that people are looking at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, I'm over here now. Do you still see me? I'm doing, I'm doing some interesting stuff over here. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm very, uh, I'm happy that I happened to be able to be in town today. Worked out very nicely. Mm-hmm. Want to plug a thing? You got a thing you want to plug? Uh, I am... Currently, and whenever this goes up, there will be two more weeks of Coriolanus at the Shakespeare Tavern in Midtown Atlanta. If for some reason you get an itch to go see some some Roman Shakespeare, then uh, come on out. I have a pretty bitchin' fight, and my face is on the poster, so come on. And then, of course, obviously, my page, which mm-hmm. you can find at tinyurl.com slash Jacob York. Duh. Duh. That, that has been... That has been a thing that I've been plugging since day one, and I don't think that I'm going to spontaneously have a whole bunch of more. Although I will say this, um, you got more than we do. Well, and I'm. <laughs> last I looked, I was two likes away from 800. 
That's a lot. So it's a lot. I mean, you know, you're hustling. If two, I'm trying. Mm-hmm. But if two people who haven't liked it that are fans of the show and enjoy me, and enjoy me, you know, if you want to go over there and like it, I'd I'd appreciate. It. I think yeah. that'd be cool. I just want I just want whenever I send my web page, my Facebook page to uh, people that don't know me, I want them to think that I'm well liked. That's the entire reason mm-hmm. that I am like, oh, <laughs> everyone like me, please, please like my page. Facebook no. is pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It can give you the illusion of popularity. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. All right, I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to a deep place there? Hmm? Are you going to a deep place there? You're just looking up with mm-hmm. your just looking, just waiting for this to be over. Just thinking. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find us on iTunes or Stitcher, so you don't miss the next episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're also on SoundCloud. Oh yeah, yeah. That's no, it's, you can go ahead and do it. I don't want to fuck it up. Can you do both of ours? I don't, maybe. Try it. So uh, so you don't miss the next episode. We will... I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what... Uh, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do calls, or maybe we'll do another... I don't know. Uh, but the next game that we talk about... Hold on, let me look it up. Uh, what is the next game? Diddy Hong Racing. Uh, number... Either 17 or 16 or 15. <laughs> 15. <laughs> Diddy Kong Racing. Is that it? That's it. Don't worry, guys. If you want more Tadpog goodness, you can find us. I d- no, I don't. I can't do it. I know it begins good. with don't worry, good. guys. That's it. I think, I, I think that that's all I've got. Don't worry, guys. You can always find us. At tadpog.com. That's where the show notes are. Mm-hmm. If you want to uh, go onto the Facebook there's a lot of cool people doing a lot of cool shit. You can find us at facebook.com slash Tadpog. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a Patreon. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can go on to patreon.com slash Tadpog. And get, if, you want, if you want to hear more about um, how we don't want to talk about games anymore, <laughs> <laughs> then you can do At you least can, one of us. Like, <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure everyone I'm pretty sure Tyler's committed. <laughs> and if and and you know, you can do that. So just go on there and like give us some money and we can um and then we we can just uh talk about not playing games some more. And you know what we really love though are five star iTunes reviews. And I mean iTunes is not the best marketplace, but it's still it is the best way for us to get seen <laughs> by new people. So, mm-hmm. uh, and one way that we uh, incentivize you is if you go uh, and give us a five star iTunes written review, you can request a game, request uh, a host, request both, whichever. And we will uh, make sure that that happens for you. We will get that done eventually. eventually. And then the don't worry, guys, happens. Yeah. I did out of order. Still pretty it's good. Okay. It's okay. It's still good. really good. Uh, we're on but Twitter. It's in the cumbersome? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, we're on Twitter, uh-huh. which you can get at twitter.com slash tadpog underscore podcast. It's cumbersome. I realize. I don't know what else. I think you can call it, us if you want. Oh, oh, I do not know the phone number. I do not know the phone number. Just try it. Uh, Just get the listeners to call some random woman <laughs> in Western Kentucky. 270-883-5453. Close. You got everything under the last four digits. There are numbers in it. <laughs> <laughs> you did better than me, who set the phone number up, where I've messed it up probably. Please don't call 270-883-5453. Please don't call it. Let's do it right now. <laughs> Just right. say, live, we'll pipe at it through midnight. and then call the person at midnight. <laughs> oh, no. Y'all ready for this? Jacob said do it. Jacob I said know. it's okay. <laughs> I've got my phone. Don't let don't right. don't put that devil on me. <laughs> All right. 270-883-2555. Nailed it. Our intro song, Dave. Moves by Pine Cone Alley. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Love that gem. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a link to that track can be found where, Tyro? It's the show notes. Nice. Tedpog.com. Very good. Very good. How do we how do we want to close this out? Um, I think you should choose. You did a lot of work in this last part. I did. I, well, okay. I did. And you are the guest. Well, I think that because um, this is possibly the last Star Wars game in the mm-hmm. immediate future. Ever. I, 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 th- I think Jar Jar Binks. 
feels like it makes <laughs> the most sense. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Dave bombed it in his mouth just a little bit. All right. So, okay. so yeah. So, let's do it. So, until next time. Triangle Capricorn! That would be a good Nicole one, too. <laughs> Hello, Internet. And welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where two old guys and a very close friend who is in the middle of their ages talk about old games. This week, we forgot to unplug the fridge, so we're going to do that real quick.